talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us. Because we know that whatever happens here is going to speak to our cause at all. It's going to make you a change when people speak to the highest things you obtain. Thank you. the Lord. He said, I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed to him. He only keeps what is committed to him. He is able to keep that. If you are too proud to give it to him, then you manage and handle it yourself. There are many of us carrying luggages in our lives today simply because we have not learned to lay it down at his feet. And to keep that which is committed to him. Lord, take my life. Lord, take my children. He says, listen, he said, come unto me, ye that are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. There are many loads we are carrying on our heads that are unnecessary. You can find rest tonight. In the next two minutes, let it be a handover service. Someone hand over that pain. Don't let it kill you for nothing. Is someone pray hand over your children hand over that financial situation promise led us to pray a few minutes ago by the leading of the spirit sensing that there are people carrying loads and luggages that are unnecessary please someone pray I lay it down I lay it down I lay it down this issue of my children this issue of my home my marriage this issue of my spouse this issue of my finances this issue of the church you have given me I lay it down I lay it down someone is praying Satan you are a liar someone is praying the issue of my rents the issue of my house the issue of my parents, the issue of the patient in the hospital will not depress me to discouragement. This is the place of faith. I believe someone is praying. Someone pray. The devil is a liar. As you are praying, that spirit of depression must jump out of your life. That spirit of doubt and fear must jump out of your destiny. God is faithful. Shagre ke peke te paraka tush ka brande ke balaka tosia. He brande ke bara sopra ke te balaka sida balatos. Don't be tired. We are still praying. I reject depression. I reject sorrow. Someone is praying. In the name of Jesus, 
I reject fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. I may not see the wind, I may not see the rain, but my valley shall be filled for sure. Faithful is he that calleth you, who will also do it. Faithful is he that calleth you, who will also do it. Faithful is he that calleth you. Faithful is he that calleth you. Faithful is he that gave you that business. Faithful is he that gave you that marriage. Faithful is he that gave you those children. Will he give you five children and not take care of them? Faithful is he. Not just mighty is he. Faithful is he. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Yes, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. says they looked unto him and their faces were lightened you become like what you are looking at if the only thing you see is pain it will keep multiplying if the only thing you see is discouragement it will keep multiplying the Bible says and we all with unveiled face beholding him as in a mirror it says we are changed we are changed from weakness to strength we are changed from shame to glory we are changed from tears to rejoicing we are changed from mourning to joy it says you have turned my mourning into dancing you have turned my sorrow to joy the animals in the days of jacob whatever they looked at they reproduced after what they were looking at many of you have been setting your eyes on the economy of nations the problem in your family tonight I want you to take your eyes away from them I know you came with a medical report I know you came crying saying Lord tonight if you don't visit me there is no way we're talking about the God of heaven they looked unto him and their faces were lightened there is no shame in looking unto him for he is the glory of the Father even revealed in the face of Jesus In Jesus name we pray. I just felt stirred in my heart to charge us to pray before we sit. Listen, you see, the believer in Christ is more than a mere human being. The believer in Christ is an ordinary man empowered by the Spirit. That means 
the things that limit men should limit you if you are not in Christ but if in Christ there should be an advantage that your life shows for as long as you are conscious of your humanity alone you will keep authorizing pain and discouragement tap into the advantage do not waste the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life there is an implication to his being there listen to the story of the gentleman drug addict taking the highest kind of drug you can take it takes more than desire to get to that state it is a spirit there is a level of passion that is not human whether it's demonic or authentically so one encounter and that was the end of it can I tell you the truth no matter how deep and serious your situation is I want you to believe me the Bible says the thing that was is the thing that is there is nothing new under the Sun read your Bible is it financial situations he brought people out of it are we together is it the issue of your children there are bills right now some of you are even afraid you don't even want to think of what I want you to find rest find rest find rest We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. For you have taken all my pain taking all the sorrow you've taken all limitations you've taken all the pain you've taken all the tears you've taken all the weeping you've taken all discouragements you've taken away the pain and you have made them yours tonight let unbelief roll like a curtain from our lives in the name of Jesus let discouragement roll like smoke before the wind let the spirit of faith be imparted upon you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ while you are standing I want you to find two or three people and prophesy to them say God is faithful let the devil hear you say it God is faithful. Shout it, let the devil hear it. God is faithful. God is faithful, faithful, faithful. In the name of Jesus. Now that doubt and discouragement is under your feet, please be gloriously seated. Hallelujah. This is what happens when you come to the house of the Lord. You find strength. You find courage. This is more than motivation. You are creating possibilities motivation primes your mind in hope that wisdom will continue the journey 
the power of God does not leave you on the way it insists that you finish are we together so this is more than motivation motivation is to keep your mind in a very conducive psychological atmosphere to enable you make decisions the power of God does not just enable it goes through the Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following hallelujah be ready to learn tonight there is a lot that you will learn tonight and I'm praying that by the light that comes from tonight's teaching the Lord will lift us even though it is a few maybe weeks to the end of the year for some of you what you will do in the next two weeks or thereabout will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ so you're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ all who are following us from across the globe may the Lord bless you it's always a joy to have you connected the Lord will do you good tonight in Jesus name just a few points to note and then I'll begin my teaching please pay attention let me encourage everyone to lend me your attention um, just to let you know that next week the 18th will be our final service for this year the 18th will be our final koinonia service for the year 2022 as you know we always give breaks towards the end of the year to allow everyone spend time with family rest retreat refresh and then be prepared for the year coming so our final service for abuja here is next week the 18th it is going to be an impartation and a prophetic service please invite friends and family we're going to come and thank God for his faithfulness and receive the final balance of the prophetic decree and the impartation that you need to finish the year well hallelujah for our Zaria family this week coming would be in Zaria please listen very carefully on Wednesday we're going to have a special um, worship worship concert in Zaria so all those who are within that area it's going to be a mighty 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 time um, it's going to be at CGC we're using over three it will be an outdoor event please invite everyone let's come and worship lift up an incense of worship over Zaria one last time before the year is done and then the final service for Zaria will be on the 16th it will be an impartation service so let me encourage everyone around that area to be part of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then by next week, hopefully, we will um, bring you word and announcement about the Koinonia School of Ministry for 2023. So please, I know that um, we've had a lot of calls from people um, we're a very responsible ministry and will not leave you at a loss as to the details just pay attention by the way that reminds me let me speak to everyone here and our global family make sure you are connected to all our social media platforms media can I have it projected can you look for it and many of you are not genuinely connected to the social media platforms it's very very difficult by now you know that when we talk about being connected it is more than our philosophy is more than having what they call these your things you know having people to you know subscribe like just for the purpose of making a name we are too serious for that kind of thing are we together it is important so that you are updated so please do well um, you should have it on your screen playing if you are not part of the social media platforms please be part of it it was designed to be able to serve you so connect YouTube Instagram Twitter Facebook make sure that you are connected so that you can follow most of us is because we are not connected so when there are updates you don't get to receive we owe you a responsibility to keep you in touch with all the ministry activities even when we are done 18th ministry still continues It's only that all our expressions will be fully online until we resume so please make sure you do so 
especially for those who are connecting from across the globe you may not have the luxury of your physical presence here make sure that your ministries your churches your groups individuals spread the word don't just come and listen to a message or follow photos connect i told you that in this ministry and in any spiritual platform fans do not have an inheritance for as long as you are a fan and a well-wisher at best you will just have the luxury of seeing what god is doing somewhere it takes genuine connection in every sense of the word to be able to receive hallelujah so please take note our final service 18th zaria our worship experience is going to be 16th wednesday by 5 p.m i believe and then um, on friday is our final impartation service we're going to have all our precious people within the house just worship and it's going to be a moment of pressing in in the spirit and the lord will grant us grace and he will do us good remember i told you that anywhere koinonia is you are there too is that true so whether it's in zaria it's not a service for zaria people it's a service for the global family it doesn't matter where i am if i go to zamfara koinonia is there having a service and all of us should connect hallelujah koinonia zaria has its social media platforms but every time i travel the global platforms follow me so you can be sure that whether it's through the zaria platforms or our global platforms you can connect and let us have a wonderful time in the spirit in the name of jesus the son of the living god by the way um, i believe the the worship experience will be aired on koinonia global so make sure you follow connect and it's going to be a wonderful time in the spirit to the glory of the name of the lord final announcement now we have it as a culture listen carefully in this ministry to bring an end of year sacrifice by revelation we have done this for many years every time it is the end of the year as a ministry and as a global family we wrap up our final service by thanking god and rejoicing and bringing a sacrifice with revelation unto the lord to thank him for his faithfulness to connect for the days that are coming hallelujah there is nothing that is done in this ministry that is by religion or ritual anything that is not sponsored by the word and by revelation anything that culminates to manipulation or the deception of god's people you can be sure that by the grace of god you will not find it here hallelujah it is one of the prophetic ways that we connect to what god has done what he is doing and then what he will do so let me encourage i'm speaking primarily to our global family and then all those who are connected prophetically that you pray plan prepare your families your organizations next week when we come here um, we're going to praise the lord all across the globe my apologies by the way i understand that uh, many people especially across europe and america and other parts have struggled to really get their seeds and whatever it is um, i can tell you that the finance department is working tirelessly we're working with our banks to come up with very seamless solutions my sincere apologies we're a responsible ministry um, you can always reach the finance department can we have the lines of the finance department and the email please let's project it this once i hate talking about money issues so that we get it out of the way my spirit has a serious message this night so let me just do the needful so that we get it out of the way give us the email address if possible and the lines so that you can use this to contact the finance department in case you need any help and then any assistance and uh, let's be patient while they try to pull it up and the lord will grant grace so please prepare you can do this for individuals for families as you are coming by revelation don't give yet until we pray it is not a ritual it is not about the money it's about the blessing that follows that connection are we together it doesn't matter whether you are giving one billion or whatever it is not about money believe me this is a ministry God has helped. You know that by now. So this is not some mechanical way to raise money. If 
Let me tell you the truth. I am one man of God who does not play games. If we need money, bar, I will come here and stand and read you a scripture and say, have I blessed you? Have I worked with you in integrity? This is what we need, period. There's no need to go around. I don't believe in all those, those drama of going left and right. People are not idiots. If you have served people sincerely and they know, they will give with honor. So there's no point manipulating. We are not that kind of thing. But I will never come and stand here to deceive you. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that's it there. I'm not sure if you can see it. If you can't see it, my apologies. After the service, do well. Uh, this is particularly for our, our global audience so that we can have, we can be on the same page. The Lord will grant us grace in Jesus' name. So remember, next week we're here. Come with your families. We're going to pray. We'll celebrate the Lord and then we'll be ready for the prophetic and then for impartation. Hallelujah. And for those who will not be able to make it to Zaria, please do well to pray for us. Pray for all those. So many people are going from here. And so you pray that we'll have a wonderful time. And that to the glory of the name of the Lord. Are you ready for tonight? By this time tomorrow. I'm teaching tonight. Please write, write. I wonder why you people always laugh and rejoice when I announce teachings. But... I, I take it that you are celebrating the word by this time tomorrow. Let it be a prophetic word for someone. Tonight, we are considering how to engage the prophetic. So I, I've captioned that whole theme uh, by this time tomorrow. We want to look at the dynamics of engaging the prophetic as a system of advantage in the life of the believer many believers do not understand the power and the potency that resides within the prophetic nor do they understand how to engage it for victory i want you to please pay attention because tonight's teaching is an epochal teaching it will open you up to a very deep spiritual understanding and crown your year and the years ahead with victory if you believe that shout a loud amen, amen. Second Kings chapter 6. Let's begin our reading from verse 24. Lots of scripture tonight, so make sure you are ready to write. The Bible says, And it came to pass after this that Ben Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and beside Samaria. 25. And there was a great famine as a result in Samaria. And behold, until you know the donkey's head could not be sold and all of that. Let's go to 26. 26 now. It says, and as the king of Israel was passing upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my Lord, O king. 27. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help? When shall I help thee? Out of the barn flour or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, Listen to this. This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. 29. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. Verse 30. On hearing this, the king heard the words of the woman and he rent his clothes. And he passed by upon the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within him upon his flesh. 31. We're reading to 33. And he said, God do so and more also to me, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. You can imagine that the king is dealing with an economic problem here, and he does not go to his advisors. He blames it immediately on the prophetic that there, I know that I may not know what the problem is, but there is a relationship between Elisha and this pain and whatever it is, he's going to pay for it. Let's finish up. But Elisha sat in his house and the elder sat with him and the king sent a man from before him. But ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elder, see how this son of a murderer had sent to take my head 
Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is it not the sound of the master's feet behind him? What an amazing prophet. I mean, this guy was not praying, no. He just sat down discussing and said, look at what these people are discussing about me. And while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him and he said, behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord any longer? Let's finish up 34 or now 7 verse 1. Give us 7 verse 1. And Elisha said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine, fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Let's stop there. Father, grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is very clear from scripture that the manifestation of the believer's victory depends on two things. Number one, understanding. And number two, engaging the systems of advantage that God has made available to the believer. Let me take it again. That while it is true that our victory in Christ is a fact, but that the manifestation of the believer's victory depends on two factors. Number one, understanding. And then number two, engaging the systems of advantage that God has made available. In Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 9 to 11, Hebrews 4, 9 to 11, the Bible says, this is Paul, the one who spearheaded the Pauline revelation, letting us know of the realities of redemption. The same Paul is teaching here and he says, There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. Verse 10, it says, For he that entered into his rest hath also ceased from his own works as God did from his. And then he charges us, verse 11, he says, Let us labor. Let us labor, therefore, to enter that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So the Bible is very clear that, potentially speaking, the victory of the believer, if using any parameter and, and, and in any dimension at all, is a fact, as far as the finished work of Christ is concerned. But stepping into the experience of it and manifesting it depends on number one, the level and the extent of your spiritual understanding. Number two, your ability to engage, to engage the systems of advantage that have been made available to the believer. Are we together? And I have taught you in this house and if you have been a believer for some time under any kind of of methodical mentorship you should have learned that there are systems of advantage it is my description you can call them forces of victory you can call them anything at all we are talking about the keys of the kingdom these are the mysteries that the believer engages in order to establish the reality of dominion here and now there are many of them jesus said i will give you the keys of the kingdom so it's not a key Believing that there is only one key of the kingdom is wrong. There is one key to the kingdom. That key is not a metal. That key is a person. Jesus is the key to the kingdom. But now when you are in the kingdom, there are many keys of the kingdom. Are we together? Yeah. The same way there is one master key that opens up. Every house has a door that we call the main door. No matter what other keys you have, if you cannot access that main door, those other keys are useless. But now that you are in the house, you will need the key to the living room, the key to the toilet, the bathrooms. You can be in the house and yet just hang around the corridors of the house because you do not have the keys of the house. The key to the house opens up the house for you. The keys of the house opens up the rooms for you. Are we together now? So the Bible lets us know that we have been given access to the keys of the kingdom. There are many keys that we engage 
in our faith work. Please listen. These are the forces that make us matured. These are the forces that empower us to command dominion. You don't wish dominion. You don't hope for dominion. You engage and manifest dominion through light. Are we together? Let me list a few of them. Number one is the ministry of prayer. This is one of the systems of advantage that have been made available to the believer in Christ. That men and women can engage in the ministry of prayer and with it command strides and victories in the spirit. He spake a parable, Luke 18 and verse 1, to the end that men ought always to pray. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, he says to pray without ceasing. Are we together? Mark chapter 11 and verse 24, he says, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receivest them and thou shalt have it. James 5, 13, he says, Is any man afflicted? He said, Let him pray. So the Bible the Bible clearly lets us know that prayer is a system of advantage that has been provided for. He said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, he said, strengthen your brethren. We see that prayer is one of the foundational systems of advantage. I will repeat every time I have the opportunity to, that prayer is not the only key. Prayer is a foundational key, but not the only key. Number two, we have the gift of men as a system of advantage. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that God reaches men through men. In Exodus chapter 3, when he had an encounter with Moses, he said, I have heard the affliction of my people by reason of their taskmasters, and I am come down. God comes down to men through men. He was sending Moses to represent him. Are we together now? Very, very important. The gift of men is one of the dominion mysteries in this kingdom. That all blessings come from men, but through men to men. So when blessings leave heaven and there are no human vessels to midwife that blessing until it gets to you, you can have a prophetic word that says you are blessed and never walk in the experience of it. The gift of men. We have the force of favor as one of the systems of advantage. Favor. Favor as one of the dominion mysteries that is responsible for the fearful rising and the exaltation of the saints. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 15. The B part. And Esther obtained favor in the eyes of all them that saw her. Esther 2.15. Esther 2.15. The B part. And Esther obtained favor in the eyes of all all them that looked upon her verse 17 of the same Esther chapter 2 it says that she found favor in the sight of the king more than all the virgins Psalm 44 and verse 3 they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hadst a favor towards them So favor is one of the dominion systems of advantage that a believer's life, even though in Christ, if it is bankrupt of the manifestation of favor, then there are many things that will not go well in your life. And I have taught you here that there are three biblical indices that prove favor. Number one, unusual access. Number two, unusual um, um, kindness. And then number three, unusual what's the third one now acceptance thank you unusual acceptance unusual access and unusual kindness these are the tripartite indices that spell favor in the life of any believer is someone learning tonight another system of advantage that the bible has made av available or god has made available to the saints is speed dominion over time Speed is a system of advantage. 
and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah the Bible says and he ran on barefoot and he overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Jezreel God is able to give men speed God is able to give men speed when when the wife of Isaac Jacob was going to bless his sons Esau I mean Isaac was going to bless his sons Esau and Jacob and he says go and make me venison such as my soul delighted so that I will bless you and on hearing that Rebekah called Jacob and said listen dress like Isaac and take the meal when he took the meal Jacob said Isaac said how come you have come so early he said because the Lord has given him paraphrasing God gave me speed that's why I came early so God can give men speed is someone learning now it says by you I will run through a troop and by my God I will leap over a wall I'm speaking to someone here who has not experienced speed yet in your life in the name of Jesus the remaining days that ends this year may they be days of speed in your life please sit down we're doing a refresher before I deal with what we're discussing tonight. I'm showing you the systems of advantage that when you say you are walking in dominion, we have a right to probe you until you defend your knowledge with these forces. If you tell me I am walking in dominion, I will say prove it. Defend what you are saying. It is by engaging these forces that we walk in dominion. Another is restoration. Restoration is a biblical system of advantage that helps men to recover lost time, helps men to recover things. Restoration is a possibility in the kingdom. And I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, God restores. The Bible says, and God restored the years of Job. In Job chapter 42 and verse 10, the Bible says that God restored Job when he prayed for his friends. Job 42 and verse 10. God himself restored, he turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. So God is a restorer. Another system of advantage, skill and diligence. Skill and diligence according to scripture is a system of advantage. The Bible says, seest thou a man diligent in his business, he leaves him with an assurance that he will stand before kings and he will not stand before mean men. Is that true? So you can be, you can be skilled or you can be born again but if you do not take the time to build capacity to become skillful in daniel chapter one when you read daniel chapter one in babylon the king was given the requirements to gather certain boys certain of the hebrew boys that will be trained out of the slaves the people that came where daniel was part of you read there and you see strict requirements the king did not just say bring anybody after all they are a covenant people no there were strict intellectual requirements there are many believers who do not place value on skill they say things like there is favor even the favor you talk about i have taught you here that favor is not unmerited favor is merited proverbs 13 15 the bible says good understanding procured favor it says but the way of the transgressor is hard give us daniel chapter one four and five maybe and then we'll We'll just get there is someone learning already it says bring children in whom there is no blemish but well favored the king did not want nonsense in his palace he knows that if you carry jonah in your boat your boat will sink the king was honest to appreciate that these guys are slave but discern look at them make sure they are skillful in all wisdom cunning in knowledge understanding science such as have the ability to stand in the king's palace so that we can teach them the tongues of the chaldeans among them verse 5 the bible says that the king appointed a daily provision and then among those boys daniel was there and all his friends and then the story continues 
God is not an author of being dull. If you are dull, it's an attack backed up by laziness. You must, you must not excuse being dull with spirituality. There is an intellectual component to dominion. Nobody will follow a leader whose mind is not at work. Are we together? Your mind must be active. Even the gift of the spirit will be buried in the mind of someone that is not developed. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.